What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's the Game Week 19 preview where I'm going to go through a bunch of your questions to try and help you ahead of Tuesday's deadline. I should say that because of the way the matches have fallen this week, I'm recording this after the Liverpool and Arsenal game, but before the Chelsea and Wolves game. You'll hear me as I go through some of the questions talk about you know when i'm recording what news we have at the time and stuff like that unfortunately that's the only way to do it over christmas but i will have my team selection video uh, on christmas day where i'll talk through my own team and anything else that happened in that chelsea and wolves game so hopefully that is okay more content to come obviously for game week 20 and the rest of the season as well so if you enjoy this one make sure to give it a like hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already and let's jump into it so first question, is Dominic Solanke essential? Now, I suspect that this question is a little bit tongue-in-cheek because it came after the hat-trick against Nottingham Forest, but a lot of people are going to be looking to bring him into their sides for game week 19. So let's discuss him as an FPL pick at the moment. He has been pretty consistent. The underlying stats are good. We know he's going to play every single game over Christmas. We've got no worries about rotation and stuff like that. So I still think generally for his price, he's someone that could be worth bringing in. But as always, it's going to depend on who you're selling i do think potentially the boat has been missed a little bit on the fixtures because a lot of people bought him in for that Luton game then they had the nottingham forest game and obviously in game week 19 it's fulham at home so there was a run of three games which looked really good on paper after that it does get a little bit trickier spurs away liverpool at home west ham away but then you're back into forest at home and fulham away and i think for someone that you can just stick into your squad and kind of set and forget like you never have to worry about when he's going to be back out of the squad or something like that. I still think he's a pretty good option to bring in. Plus, when you look at those fixtures, Spurs away, not exactly the most watertight defence. I mean, I own Pedro Porro, mostly for the attack and returns. Hopefully, he'll get the odd clean sheet. But I don't really expect too many of those week to week. Liverpool at home, I think Bournemouth could score in that game. And West Ham is... I don't know. They ha the defence has been pretty bad this season, right? They have picked up a couple of clean sheets more recently. But again, I would expect Bournemouth to go and score in that game. If they do, Solanke is usually one of the first names you would think has kind of contributed to that. So I still think he's a pretty good option, even at 6.9 million. Obviously, his price has gone up quite a lot, especially if you're selling someone like Isaac or Darwin Nunez um, or a forward like that. I wouldn't sell Watkins, for example. Uh, and also, because of that Luton game that got called off, that will have to be rearranged at some point. Now, I looked at Ben Crellin's tweets to when he thinks it could happen. And because they haven't got European matches and stuff like that, it could be that the double game week against Luton doesn't go in until game weeks 34 or 37. But there is the possibility that it could go a little bit earlier than that around game week 25. And if that happens, then obviously you've got pretty good fixtures and then a double to come later on. Look, it's not essential, of course, but I just think he's an all-round good pick. So right now at the time of recording, um, he's been transferred in by, let's have a quick look at this, 53,000 FPL manager. I think that's going to continue to grow. And I just don't think you can sit here and say that is a bad pick. If you're looking for someone consistent, I think he's great. Definitely not essential, but I can't see me selling him anytime soon. I already own him. Happy about that. I think people looking to jump on, it's a good time to do it. So who's the best player to captain this week? And then the person that asked the question went on to say, I'm stuck between Salah, Solanke, Palmer and Watkins. Now with Palmer, I am recording this before the Chelsea and Wolves game. So if he gets a yellow card in that match, he won't be available for game week 19 anyway. But even if he was going to play in that match, I'm not sure I'm at the, I'm not sure I'm ready to captain him, right? I think his stats are pretty good, but they're mostly geared towards assists rather than goals. And he does have penalties and he does have the minutes. But there's just something telling me he's not at the level where I would want to captain him instead of a Son or instead of a Salah. And maybe subconsciously his price is playing a part in that thinking for me. But I'm just not quite there for captaincy, even though he's playing Crystal Palace at home. I think the standout probably is just Salah, right? I mean, Salah's never a bad option. And on paper, he's got one of the best fixtures you can have, Burnley away. Obviously, you'd rather it was at home. And I know Burnley have just kept a clean sheet against Fulham away. But I don't see how Liverpool don't score in this game. We know Salah is almost certainly going to start. And he'll probably have a part to play. Plus, obviously, he's penalty taker and all that kind of stuff. We already know. The only, I guess, counter argument that I've seen some people make is could he be rested in that game? Because they've just played on Saturday night. And now they've got to play on Tuesday night as well. So it is a quick turnaround. And he played 90 minutes against Arsenal, 90 minutes against Man United. But I think he will start that game. So even if he comes off on the 60th, 70th minute, that probably is still enough against a team like Burnley. 
So I will be captain in Salah this week, and I think he probably is the standout. In terms of the other options mentioned or anyone else you could look at, I mean, Son is, again, a bit like Salah and Harlan. He's never going to be a bad choice. If you wanted to go for him against Brighton, that is a good decision. But I just think most of us would probably have Salah slightly ahead of Son in terms of an overall FPL option. And then on paper, Burnley away is better than Brighton away. I mean, Brighton haven't kept any clean sheets this season, and I'm sure Son will get chances. But I don't think on paper he's a better option than Salah. So a good option in his own right, but not the player that I'll be going for. I mean, in terms of other players, you've got Saka against West Ham at home. So a home fixture, never bad. I, th I, I get the feeling with Saka that people that own him are a bit frustrated with him. Like they don't see, they don't think he's getting enough returns. But he's got five goals, eight assists this season. I know he's blanked three games in a row. One assist against Luton, one goal against Wolves. But we know what he can do. So I wouldn't rule him out. But it also doesn't feel like a great week to captain him again versus a Son or versus a Salah. And we should, I should quickly mention Haaland. Uh, so as of right now, at the time of recording, I don't yet know if he's going to be available for the Everton game. Hopefully we'll hear from Pep Guardiola before that match. But obviously with Christmas and stuff like that, there is a chance that we won't before the deadline. There was a picture that he posted on Twitter kind of almost alluding to the fact it's not it's only a matter of time before he's back so it could be that he's back for Everton but I think last year if I'm correct when he came back from injury he was on the bench for the next game so I think if he is available to play he'll be on the bench against Everton come on and then hopefully start against Sheffield United so I think we'll be talking about Haaland for captaincy in game week 20 I'm not sure I would go there for game week 19 obviously if you own him I'd probably play him if we don't get any news but I wouldn't go as far to captain him uh, and then obviously Watkins was mentioned, but Man United away, could Villa score in that game? Absolutely, Man United not exactly playing well this season, but it doesn't feel like a great match to ca uh, captain him. He's not a midfielder, he doesn't have penalties, and that's not just because he let us down against Sheffield United. I was never even thinking about him for captaincy this week anyway. So Watkins could get a return, but would it be enough to do better than a Son or a Salah? Not this week for me. So I think that's the main options. I'm going to go for Salah, and I think my vice captain as it stands yeah, is Son. But I think Sack is an option. I don't think Palmer is awful. I just don't think he's at the level for me right now to captain him. And you could go for Solanke against Fulham at home. The only thing I'd say on that is, were you considering that before the hat trick? Has that changed your mind? There's nothing wrong with that per se, but I don't think that is enough for me to now think he's a great captain for Fulham. I think he'll get a return there. I think a bit like Watkins because Fulham at home on paper is such a good fixture. Not a great defence Fulham, but to captain him ahead of Salah or Son this week maybe because it's the home fixture but it's just not enough for me so I'm going to go for Salah then Son then there's loads of other options take your pick so is it time to stop captaining players who are playing against Sheffield United I think the short answer is no but I also get why the question is being asked because under Chris Wilder there has been a little bit of improvement at least in terms of how they're organized the shape when they defend they're trying to make it difficult for other teams and obviously all teams try to do that but I think Chris Wilder can get something out of that Sheffield United defence. But I still don't think it's enough where I'd worry about captaining players against them. Like if we look at their recent fixtures. Um, so I think the first game that Wilder was in charge was the Liverpool game. Now Liverpool did end up scoring twice. But I watched that. Sheffield United did make it difficult for them. They beat Brentford 1-0. They lost to Chelsea 2-0. But in the first half, again, Chelsea found it quite difficult to break them down. But... In the end, they put up 2.75 expected goals against them. So it's not like Chelsea were lucky or anything like that. They did create enough chances. And I think sometimes it just comes down to game state. Like Villa only put up 0.89 expected goals. But had they taken a chance earlier on in that game, would they then have had more chances? So I think there has been an improvement for Sheffield United under Wilder, which I think is to be expected, right? Sheffield United were not going to get any worse. Um, but I don't think I would now be worried about captaining players against them. I mean, Man City away in game week 20. I think if Haaland's fit right, we're all going to captain him. West Ham at home, Sheffield United have got in 21. Probably not going to captain Bowen, but he's going to be a great option. And then obviously um, Watkins plays them again in game week 23, this time away from home. Is he going to be a captain? Probably not. But that's just because in game week 23, let's just quickly skip there. Um, I mean, Man City got Brentford away. She'd so probably go for Haaland over someone like Watkins in that week but to be honest Watkins is probably going to be one of the best options um Son probably won't be available if he's still at the Asia Cup so yeah maybe Watkins in game week 23 but we're only in game week 19 we don't need to start worrying about that 
Would I stop captain and players against Sheffield United? Absolutely not. So which defender should we bring in for Lascelles and Simicast? Now, if you haven't already seen, both of these players went off injured in their respective matches on Saturday. Uh, with Simicast, it was a bit of a nasty one. I'm not expecting him to play for Liverpool for a little while. The reports coming in after the game is that he's got a suspected broken collarbone. So he is someone that you're probably going to have to sell pretty soon. With Lascelles, he also went off injured. But I've looked for kind of information since then i can't really see how bad that injury was so i can't sit here and tell you whether he's someone that needs to go straight away but it is worth saying that both Cher, who played that game started against luton and botman who came on are obviously both available for newcastle so there's not necessarily a need to rush lascelles back if he has picked up a bit of a knock where they don't want to risk him being out for a long time um hopefully we'll hear some more news before the deadline obviously i can talk about that on the deadline stream but that's kind of where we're at right now um, with newcastle just quickly let me just double check here i think botman came on yeah he played 53 minutes so obviously they're building up his minutes quite slowly uh, and share played the whole game so if they're both fit for Nottingham forest in 19 you would expect that lascelles won't play and then after that, it's Liverpool away, Man City at home, and Villa away anyway. So there's not really a massive need to keep hold of him. But of course, if he's your cheapest defender, like he's a fifth defender you don't have to play, then you could just let him stay on your bench. Similar, um, obviously, thing with Simakas as well. Now, in terms of replacements, a lot of that comes down to how much money you have to spend. If you've got the money for Trent, he looks fantastic right now. He was great again against Arsenal. Some of the balls he put through, like the assist for Salah, was incredible. And he has now returned in nine of the last 10 game weeks. Now, I don't for one second think he's going to keep that up. Like the next 10 game weeks, is he going to return nine times? Almost certainly not. But with all the money going around at the moment, if you can spare it, he looks like a decent option to bring in. Burnley away this week, uh, Newcastle at home in 20, Bournemouth away in 21, Chelsea at home in 22. I don't think those fixtures are necessarily as bad as they look on paper. But more to the point, it's the money that is available, right? If we still had Harden and Salah and Son, would I be trying to find a way to buy Trent? Probably not. I don't think those fixtures are as bad as they look, but they're not, you know, must. They don't make him must own or anything like that. But I think with the way FPL looks right now, a lot of people can afford it. Now, some people have said to me, if you buy Trent, how will you get Harden back? Well, I'm just going to sell Salah. That's something I'll talk about for my own team. Um, so Trent looks great if you've got the money for it. If you're going a little bit cheaper, I think Arsenal defenders are great if you haven't already got one or even two. And I don't think it's completely out of the question to go back to looking at the double up again. So you've got Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko, probably the best options. I mean, Ben White usually plays as well. And obviously, Tommy Asu is out at the moment. But he's 5.6 minutes. I guess it's only 0.1 more than Saliba. But I'd rather pay for that safety of starts like forever Saliba's never getting rested unless he gets injured or something like that um, and I still think I would go for Gabriel over Zinchenko because he's just 0.3 million less and when Tommy Asu is back although it could be a little while then Zinchenko and Ben White are going to be slight rotation threats whereas Gabriel seems to be starting the majority of games the last one he missed was game week 10 against Sheffield United he's played 90 minutes ever since I think for 4.9 million it's incredible value West Ham at home this week Fulham away in 20 Palace at home in 21 Forest away in 22. Like you could play Arsenal defenders in any of those games if you needed to. So if you haven't already got them, I know we've not spoken about them a lot recently as transfers in, but that's because of the fixtures they had last three games. I think the ones coming up are a lot better. So I'd probably go Gabriel if you're looking for someone under five. Otherwise, I'd probably just try and pay the extra for Saliba. And I've got the double up. And right now, I don't see it going anywhere. Uh, with Pedro Pari, still a good option. I guess the only thing with Spurs is... Not the greatest defence. I don't expect a huge amount of clean sheets. But he got some pretty nice fixtures coming up. Brighton away this week. They probably will concede. Could Pori get an attack and return? Hopefully so. Bournemouth at home in 20 is okay. Man United in 21. A little bit more difficult. But then it's Brentford at home in 22. Brighton at home in 24. Wolves at home in 25. Palace at home in 27. There's quite a lot of good home games coming up for them. And as they get other players back fit, that will help them as well. The only thing to say on Spurs is Romero also went off um, today with a knock. He only played 45 minutes. Now, I don't know how bad that was, because, again, I'm kind of making this video just after all the games have finished, but that obviously would dent the appeal of Spurs' defence in general. So I know recently it probably feels like 
the way I've talked about Poro, I think he's must have. That is definitely not the case. But I do think he's quite an exciting defender to own. And if you haven't got him, I think he's a reasonable player to bring in. If we want to go cheaper, so let's say you got LaSalle and Simicash, you don't really want to go too much over kind of 4.5 million. And there's quite a few options, but no, no real standouts, I would say. Like Everton, I would just ignore, right? They've got Man City at home uh, this week, Villa at home in 21, Spurs at home in 23, Man City away in 24. They could get clean sheets, but I just wouldn't go there with those fixtures. I think with Crystal Palace... You know, Brentford at home in 20 is okay. Sheffield United at home in 22 is all right. If you don't need to play them in the other game, which you could look at bringing one of them in soon, but you wouldn't want to do it in game week 19 away to Chelsea. I think if you're going for Villa, it has to be Cons, or I wouldn't go for Diego Carlos. He's not as nailed on. But again, would you want to buy them for Man United away this week? Probably not. So you could delay the decision until game week 20 and get them for Burnley at home. And then a couple of other players to mention. Dan Burn is only 4.4 million. I think, and I think from what we've seen in the last couple of games, it's probably correct. He is just first choice left back. I don't think Liveramento is going to take that position. I said that before the last couple of games, and that seems to be what's happening. But can I guarantee that Dan Byrne will start on Tuesday after not, uh, sorry, after playing on Saturday? Definitely not. It could be Liveramento that starts that match. So again, is this the best time to bring in a Newcastle defender? Probably not. The team that I might look at outside of all of those is Chelsea. So you've got Gusto at 4.1 million and uh, Colwell at 4.6. Again, monitor what happens in that Wolves game because if they get injured or anything like that, not worth bringing in. The next three games, Palace at home, Luton away and Fulham at home. So although last week I would have gone for a Villa defender instead, if you need them to play in game week 19, I think I'd prefer to buy someone like Colwell instead of Konza this week, especially with the next three matches they've got so he's probably the one that i would look at just quickly on gusto because i know this is um running on quite a lot to talk about defenders i, I think a lot of people are predicting him to start and look he might start against walls you, you might have seen that game by the time you watch this but i don't think he's a guarantee to play even with reese james out for so long because disazi or someone like that could just play right back instead but what it's worth i think gusto should start i think he's more attacking i think sometimes chelsea need that especially when you got colwell left back but there's no way I could guarantee you he's going to get regular minutes. So I think Trent, if you've got lots of money to spend, Arsenal defence is solid and so is Poro as an FPL option. And then I think Colwell will be right up there as one of the picks to go for this week. So which midfielder, if any, should we be dropping for a Charlison? Salah, Son, Bowen, Palmer and Gordon all feel worth holding on to for now. And even if you haven't got that exact midfield, you've probably got a similar one. Like for me, I don't have Bowen, but I have Saka instead. And I think the answer is you don't need to drop any of them for a Charlison, at least not in game week 19. He might be someone that you bring in later on, but he hasn't suddenly become so essential that you've got to force him into your team. All five of those players have got pretty good fixtures either this week or moving forward to the point where a Charlison isn't better. Even if Palmer was to get a yellow card against Wolves and miss Crystal Palace at home, you've then got Luton away, Fulham at home in 20 and 21. Liverpool away in 22, Wolves at home in 23, Palace away in 24. It's a pretty good fixture run, especially if you got on him early. Like if you got him at 4.95, 5.1, etc., you probably don't want to sell him just for missing one match, especially while the minutes are still looking good. I guess if you bought him for 5.5 or 5.6, you could get rid of Richarlison and then get Palmer back later on. It's not like he's essential, but for most people, he doesn't need to be sold. Um, Anthony Gordon has got Forrest at home. I've got Saka against West Ham at home. Bowen's obviously got Arsenal away, but the fixtures afterwards are pretty good. And then Salah and Son are great. We're talking about them for captaincy. So yeah, I don't. I think for most people, you just don't need to buy Richarlison this week. Obviously, when Salah and Son go to African Cup of Nations and Asia Cup in game week 21, that might be the time that you look to bring Richarlison in. And with Spurs fixtures, it's not like it's going to be too late, right? That would be Man United away. Maybe that's not on paper the best time to bring him in it's not awful then you've got those fixtures i've already spoken about brentford everton brighton wolves uh chelsea crystal palace etc so yeah i think richarlison is good but i mean i just wouldn't worry about him this week the other thing to say just quickly he did come off on the 62nd minute with what looked like a bit of a knot but it didn't look like it was going to be bad or anything like that and i'm pretty sure he's just going to start the next game unless we hear news to the contrary um, I think he probably will start against Brighton away in game week 19. So if you've got a spare midfield slot and you need to bring someone in, I really like him. 
I just don't think he's suddenly essential that you need to force other players out. So is Liveramento officially a sell? And I think long term, the answer is yes. He is someone that you should probably look to transfer out of your squad because it looks like Dan Byrne is first choice left back. We know Trippier is first choice right back. So Liveramento isn't going to get a huge amount of game time. But I do wonder, because it's December and there's a quick turnaround with matches, is game week 19 the right time to sell him? Now, if you're looking at your squad, and you've got nothing else to do and you can deal with the liver memento issue now, then there's nothing wrong with that. I already spoke about defenders you could bring in earlier. But if it's for a minus four, then I would question whether that's the right decision because there has to be a chance that he will start on Tuesday, right? They've just played on Saturday. The next game is on Tuesday against, uh, is it Forest at home? Yeah, Forest at home. And it's at half 12 as well. So it's quite an early kickoff. Could liver memento play instead of Dan Byrne? who's only recently back from injury. Now, I do think it's encouraging for anyone that's got Dan Byrne that he's played 83 minutes against Fulham and 84 against Luton. So he could start again. But I think that Eddie Howe might take this opportunity to give him a little bit of a rest, to not overload him straight away, and let Liveramento play instead, who, by the way, has been very good in that left-back position. So long-term, I think Liveramento does have to go, unless, obviously, Newcastle pick up more injuries in one of the full-back positions. But I think for game week 19, you could potentially get away with it. I am definitely not guaranteeing that he will start, but I would question whether he's worth selling for a minus four in game week 19. Like I said, long term, definitely got to go. So similar question, is it time to sell Nunez? And I think the answer is pretty similar as well. Long term, he probably is someone that has to go because although I do think he's first choice number nine and we may see him play some game time on the left as well, you can't guarantee his minutes even when Salah goes to... African Cup of Nations. So long term, he probably is a good transfer out. But in game week 19, he's almost certainly going to start because he was benched against Arsenal and he's playing Burnley away. And that is the kind of fixture where even Darwin Nunez might go and get a return for you. And I think it, basically pretty much anyone that has played in game week 18 has to be somewhat of a doubt for game week 19. Obviously, there's going to be lots of defenders that play. Players like Jared Bowen, Dominic Solanke, they're all going to start. Same with Son. But, but teams that have the ability to rotate might take that opportunity, especially when the turnaround time is pretty quick. So I think Nunez definitely starts, and Bernie on paper is a good fixture. And the other kind of point is, if you do sell him, who are you buying? Because Watkins is great. Is Man United away the absolute essential time to bring him in? Probably not. He's still a good option if you don't own him. But I think a lot of people already do. Solanke, we already spoke about. Again, if you don't own him, he's not the worst player to bring in. But outside of that, it's quite tricky this week. Even if you were looking at someone like Callum Wilson, who started again against Luton and played 90 minutes, Isaac is now back and he got 52 minutes against Luton. So even if in game week 19, he's not affecting Wilson's game time, he might do from game week 20 onwards. So personally, I just wouldn't buy either of the Newcastle forwards right now. You could look at a Man City forward, of course. And I think ultimately that's what's going to happen to Nunez in my own squad. I'm either going to sell him to Alvarez or Haaland. But let's say Haaland's out for another two or three game weeks, right? Suddenly Alvarez, uh, Alvarez becomes a good option because he's going to play number nine, penalties, etc. Probably penalties anyway. It's not a guarantee. But is Alvarez against Everton away better than Darwin against Burnley away? I don't think he necessarily is. And obviously, if you've got two free transfers and you can't think of anything else to do and you just want to deal with the issue right now, then again, no issues with people selling Darwin. Of course not. Um, but I think for a lot of people, it's just going to make sense to play him this week against Burnley. At the very least, he's a really good first bench option as well. So is it time? Yes, soon I think it is. But I'm pretty confident he's going to play in game week 19 and it's a really nice fixture. So when should we sell Son and Salah? Obviously, Son's going to the Asia Cup in January. Salah's going to African Cup of Nations. And I feel like I've covered this quite a lot over the last couple of game weeks, but people keep asking me the question. So all I would say is for most people, you don't need to be in a rush to sell two incredibly good FPL options. You can just keep them till game week 21, which is when they're going to be unavailable, and then just deal with it then. Now, there might be some circumstances where you get to game week 20, you've got two free transfers, nothing else to do. And therefore, you sell one of them and take a bit of a risk because you know later on you're going to have to transfer them out anyway. Or perhaps you're like me, and the only way to get Harlan back in is to sell one of these two players in game week 20. And I'd really want Harlan if he's fit for Sheffield United at home. Then maybe I'll sell them. But in game week 19, I don't think anyone should be looking at selling them. And if you want to keep hold of them, or you don't have that Harlan problem, or even maybe Harlan's not back by game week 20, 
you're just going to hold on to them for two more weeks because Salah's got Burnley away in 19 and Newcastle at home in 20. And Son has got Brighton away this week and then Bournemouth at home in 20. So there's no need to sell them. And I get it, right? People want to pre-plan who they're going to bring in, in the, over the next couple of weeks. And that's a good thing to do. But bear in mind that if any of those players get injured, you're going to have to change your transfer in anyway. So when should you sell them? Probably at least one of them in game week 21, possibly before before that under certain circumstances. But for most people, you just don't have to worry about this decision for, if I can get my words out, you don't have to worry about this decision for another couple of weeks. In terms of players to bring in, obviously we can discuss it at the time. Um, I suspect that a lot of people will be looking at Jared Bowen, who's been incredible this season. He's now on 11 goals, one assist, which is ridiculous. Only cost 7.8 million. And from game week 20, they've got Brighton at home, Sheffield United away, Bournemouth at home. Next three fixtures, which are pretty good. It is then Man United away, Arsenal at home. But I don't even think that's that bad for someone like Bowen. So not really someone who's must own in game week 19. He's got Arsenal away. But after that, he's a good transfer in. Um, obviously, Richarlison, we've already spoken about. Pretty good option without Son. Saka, although you know he hasn't got a huge amount of points recently, people are going to be looking at Arsenal midfielders. Mostly because with Son and Salah not there, there's just less players to choose from. Obviously, Gordon blanked again this week, so people might stop looking at him so much. And I think Saka, let's just say you're buying in game week 21. You've got Palace at home, Forest away, Liverpool at home, West Ham away, Burnley away. It's not that bad of a fixture run. And look, right now it sounds incredibly stupid, and I'm not sure I will go there. But Man United's fixtures, Spurs at home in 21, Wolves away in 22, West Ham at home in 23, Villa away in 24, Luton away in 25, Fulham at home in 26. It's not an awful fixture run. And someone like Fernandes, you know, is going to start and is on penalties, you know, could get a look in only because so many options are going away in January. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be considering him. So I think the number one target for most people is going to be Bowen. And then probably Richarlison, especially if he keeps up this level of form. But like I said, stop worrying about when you're going to sell them. Just enjoy game week 19 and probably game week 20 for most of you. So I put this question in at the end because I completely forgot to talk about Man City defenders earlier when I was discussing Lascelles and Simicast replacements. We'll just blame it on Christmas or something like that. Um, is Walker a good option instead of Simicast or Lascelles? And I think the Man City defense in general is worth looking at because despite the lack of clean sheets in the Premier League recently, the stats are still pretty good. In terms of expected goals conceded per 90, they're like top three defense in the league. So you would hope that at some point those clean sheets will come. And the fixtures they've got coming up are pretty good as well. I mean, in 19, it's Everton away. Is there a definite clean sheet there? I'm not so sure about that. But Sheffield United at home in 20 is pretty decent. You could bench them in 21 for Newcastle away. Then they got Burnley at home in 22, Brentford away in 23, Everton at home in 24. So I think there are some fixtures over the next kind of five to six game weeks where there could be clean sheets there. The only thing for me is, look, you've got Walker at 5.3 million, who to be fair so far has played every single minute in the league. You've also got Ruben Diaz at 5.5, who starts the majority of games as well. But in my experience, it's just so frustrating owning a Man City defender because there's always that thing in your back of your mind about whether they'll definitely start. So even if I own Carl Walker, and I've seen that he started every game this season. I'm still going to check the clean, uh, sorry, not clean sheet. I'm going to check the team sheet every time Man City play just to make sure he's there. They don't necessarily offer a huge amount of attacking threat either. So when they inevitably find a way to concede, which frustratingly they always seem to do, you're not really expecting many attacking returns on top of that. Whereas with someone like Pedro Porro, you definitely are. And even like Saliba and Gabriel, I would say they're more likely to get you a goal from a set piece than someone like Diaz and obviously more than Walker for sure it's not like he's going to get you a huge amount of goals and assists either like in all the matches he's played so far he's got one assist right he's just not that much of an attacking defender so I think potentially there is clean sheets there but if they don't get them I feel like there's a lot of frustration going to be had by anyone that brings him in I feel like you've got to be a certain type of FPL manager to cope with Man City consistently losing their clean sheet so you could get them instead of par or instead of an arsenal defender and kind of rotate them in for the better fixtures but i don't think they're they're certainly not essential or anything like that the only other thing to note is there is a chance they will replay that well sorry they'll definitely replay that brentford game at some point and i know we already discussed that it could happen in 20 could happen in 21 doesn't look like either of those are likely now but it's still got to be played at some point 
And it could be that it goes into kind of game weeks 25 or 26. I think that's what the fixture gurus have been saying. So not only have they got pretty good fixtures in the short term, they may also have a double later on. But I've been looking at it. Like, could I really bring myself to buy a Man City defender before I buy someone like Trent? I know there's a huge price difference, but I'm thinking about bringing a defender into an Occupy a spot in my squad. I just don't know if I want Kyle Walker there on the off chance of a double game week later instead of buying someone who's really fun to own an FPL like Trent. So it's just a case of, I don't think they're bad options. I just think for most people, you bring them in, you're going to get frustrated straight away. I just know it will happen, but I don't think anyone can argue that they don't have a good chance of clean sheets against Sheffield United at home in 20, Burnley at home in 22, and maybe even Everton at home in 24 as well. So I think there's reason to look at them, but would I buy Kyle Walker before I bought Gabriel or Saliba? I'm not so sure about that, to be honest. And then with Poro, there's a lack of clean sheets probably, but definitely the attacking upside there. So... I may buy a Man City defender at some point, especially if they do end up doubling. But I think I would prefer to leave that decision as late as possible. If you've enjoyed that video, make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'll be back tomorrow with my team selection, which I'm going to try and record after the Chelsea versus Wolves game, just so I've seen everything uh, before I talk through what I'm going to do with my team. Unfortunately, because of the way the matches have fallen, obviously Christmas Day and stuff like that, I'm only going to be putting out game week preview and team selection for game week 19. And I will be doing a deadline stream on Boxing Day that starts at half nine uh, in the morning UK time. So make sure to check that out. And then we'll do a bit more content ahead of game week 20 as well. So hopefully you enjoy your Christmas if you're celebrating. Whatever you're doing over the next couple of days, enjoy it. Hopefully there's more green arrows to come in game week 20. I'll be back tomorrow with team selection. Give this video a like, hit that subscribe button, rate five stars if you listen on podcast. And I'll catch you again tomorrow.